You're now tuning in to check out the stat by your girl, Treasure Wilson, aka Stat Baby. We cover S, the superwoman killing it in the industry, T, talk to Stat, where we interview special guests or discuss entertainment, A, for ain't no way, it'll speak for itself, just wait, and finally, T, tell me what's up, because the stats wouldn't be the stats without questions and opinions from you. So let's start with our superwoman in the spotlight. The first superwoman is Asia Wilson from the Vegas Aces. Shout out the Aces because they are the first back-to-back WNBA championship winners since the Sparks in 2002. Asia was awarded MVP of the 2023 finals and they beat the New York Liberty in four games. During the finals, Asia averaged 21.3 points, 12.5 rebounds, and 1.3 blocks per game. So for the finals game, which is five games, not seven, because it's not NBA, it's the WNBA. She had 24 points, 16 rebounds, and this was all without three starters. Imagine the Warriors trying to win without Steph, Clay, and Draymond. She did it though. She is already the WNBA Defensive Player of the Year and is truly one of the best and homegirl not even 30 years old. Because of this win, their whole team is definitely lit. For their win last year, she made one request. She said, if you not four shots in, don't come stay at the house. She said, anything other than that is unacceptable. Unless you're a child, then take four shots of ginger ale. And this year, during their post-game interview, after the dub, they was lit. So picture this, right? Asia's at the table trying to answer questions for the post-game presser. Whole team comes out popping bottles of Moe champagne. They bring it out the speaker. They playing, nook, if you bug, nook, if you bug. They were so lit and they were ready to turn up and as they rightfully should. So the next superwoman is Angel Reese. After Shaq was named president of Reebok Basketball alongside Allen Iverson as vice president, she signed as its first basketball athlete of the next generation. So you know Shaq said, we either going big or we going home. So he chose your girl, Angel Reese. Shaq said, there is no one making a bigger impact on the game right now than Angel Reese. Coming from Shaq? Oh yeah, that girl is lit. Now the running topic and the big debate everybody keeps talking about is, oh my gosh, what about Caitlin Clark? Why isn't Caitlin Clark named it? If I was Shaq, I would choose Caitlin Clark. Truth be told, Caitlin and Angel are both running the college women's ball basketball world, but there is enough opportunities for everyone. Angel infiltrated the news. She has more followers than Caitlin Clark. She got a milli and Shaq literally went to LSU. So to me, it's a no brainer. In addition, LSU was also the number one team in the preseason top 25 poll for the first time in its school history. So she making waves. Why would Shaq not choose her? So you can argue all day on who you think is the best player or not, but she surely makes an impact. So it makes a whole lot of sense to me. And speaking of Caitlin Clark, she is the next superwoman because I don't know why it's hard for y'all to grasp. There's space for multiple women to win. The three-time USA basketball gold medalist just recently played a phenomenal game against DePaul in a football field with 55,646 fans. So they ain't playing at the court. They playing on the field. You heard me right, over 55,000 people, which is already a school record and a record anyway. And during that game, the reigning national player of the year put up a triple-double of 34 points, 11 rebounds, and 10 assists. Caitlin is a bucket, and you can't tell me otherwise. And as time goes on, it will be crazy to see when they get the chance to show their skills and transition into the WNBA. Now, look, in my opinion, I like Angel Reese, but Caitlin Clark is definitely my favorite. I mean, she's had 40-point triple-double games, and she just makes it look easy. So if you haven't watched her highlights, make sure to go and look and tune in because she be killing it. Finally, we must highlight Teresa Weatherspoon. She is the newest head coach of the Chicago Sky, but what's more impressive is her accolades. She's a five-time WNBA All-Star from 1999 to 2003. Five times. She's a four-time WNBA second team from 1997 to 2000. 
a two-time WNBA Defensive Player of the Year in 1997 and 1998. And in the Olympics, because she didn't just stop at the WNBA, she's a two-time Olympic medalist where she won gold in 1988 and bronze in 1992. And the list just keeps going. It doesn't even start stop there. She played for the New York Liberty in the WNBA's inaugural season as one of the original WNBA players. And she led the Liberty to their first ever WNBA finals in 1997. And you think I would stop there, but no, it keeps going. So as far as her overall accomplishments, she is number two all-time in WNBA career assists, started in the first five WNBA All-Star games, and she was hired by the Pelicans in 2019, becoming the eighth woman ever, ever to earn a full-time coaching position in the NBA. So she's killing it. So in my opinion, I think she's going to be a great addition to the team. She has more than enough knowledge. And if you check out her Instagram, check out the way she vibes. She has this electric energy that will definitely be a great addition to the team. And this is why she is rightfully being highlighted. I know you're tuned in to It Is What It Is, the hottest sports show out. So you've probably seen the intros I've created for our big time guests. But today I'm going to give my intro. So allow me to reintroduce myself. My passion has always been to inspire, empower, and educate people and allow spaces for others to tell their stories. And I've been doing this since I could speak, whether conducting public interviews from literally middle school, interviewing athletes and entertainers during college, or even hosting the one and only It Is What It Is. I was born in Jacksonville, grew up in Tampa, and I'm a graduate of the University of Miami, I majored in broadcast journalism with minors in political science, theater, and media management. Telling stories and interviewing ain't nothing new for me, and you'll see more along the way, and I'm all about spicing things up. So first, can you say where you're from? I'm from Switzerland, Zurich. Okay, can you do your best American accent? Howdy, stranger. I'm from Houston, Texas. If you could create an NBA team with your top five favorite players, who would be on it? So Wyatt, the Kings have a great opportunity to get back in the race for the ACC title game. Do you think they have a chance? I've been doubted all my life, and I'm just like, you know what? Why am I listening to you? Right, like, exactly. I know what I want to do, exactly. and I'm here to do it. That's my purpose in life, to fulfill my dreams and hopefully encourage others to fulfill theirs too. So. Le'Veon Bell admits yeah. he was petty and made a mistake to not return to the Steelers. Yeah. He said he wanted to apologize for leaving the best fans there is in the world and that he should have never left. Do you regret leaving the Steelers and do you agree with his statement? No, I don't regret leaving the Steelers. We're at the point where regardless of what you say, people want to listen to your voice. Okay. Mason Cam say they can't get canceled, they cancel themselves. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's the same for you? No, I don't feel like it's the same okay. for me. Because of an interview, there's a narrative that you don't like Jordan Poole because he kept talking smack and you had a game. Yeah. That's false, though. Yeah, that's what I'm going to say. Can you elaborate on what had happened? As far as quarterback picks, I'm going to put, of course, Pat Mahomes first, then Joe Burrow, then for now, Aaron Rodgers. The Big Three made history as the first Black-owned sports league, which is a huge mm. deal. You didn't even say it. You just kind of sat back and watched. But I'm going to say it because that's a big Thank deal. You. Thank you. What does that mean to you? And for people watching, what would you want them to know? The one thing <laughs> I will add, obviously, Oregon played a great game. But I don't like that people took this as an opportunity to be like, OK, Dion, do you still believe Yes, I still believe yeah. because he's changed the culture and the game. <laughs> so you don't need to take that away from yeah. him. Tom Brady is a clutch player. He is that QB. He's the legend. He's the GOAT for a reason. I do not think that man came back another year to lose. Today, nobody is safe. And I will add, I think we all wanted to see Wemby play, but I understand the Spurs decision to take him out because he has too much negative stuff coming from yeah. everywhere else. So just sit the boy down, let him sit this out. He'll come back and return. Given the teams that they're all on, the Texans, the Panthers, and the Colts, all really hard teams to kind of work with. They have you a lot to kind of rebuild. Bryce is... He's statistically the better quarterback. He is. Bryce Young? That's why he was the first pick, for sure. Definitely hate because I don't really think it's even stemming from self-doubt, and I don't even think it's a persona. I think Dion is really him. He came to coach these guys, and that's what we want to see. Who would you rather have, Tyler Hero or Damian Lillard? Damian Lillard. It's like when we see Tyler Hero, it's like at first it's like it, he feels like Miami, but realistically he's been injured a lot, so I'll take Dame. Also, on the topic of the Kelsey brothers, it's reported that Chiefs tight end Travis Kelsey might be dating Taylor Swift. What are your thoughts on the rumor? If you were to come back into the NFL right now, yeah. what team would you want to play for? 
I'll probably build my own team. The talk of the town has been Coach Prime and Colorado. Mm -hmm. Travis Hunter had an insane debut, and this is what other schools wanted. It was to the point that Coach Prime revealed that other people offered him $1.5 million to try to lure him and buy him out of the transfer portal. He then added, I can't wait until they see what he's capable of doing in these next couple of years because he will be a top five or top three pick after his junior year. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in to today's episode. Dame, thank you for being here. And as always, it is what it is. So now we're answering Ain't No Way. I told you the name would speak for itself. So just wait. This is where we talk about the crazy things that have happened this week. Ain't no way Russell Wilson will be able to win any games as long as he's with Sierra. I'm going to let y'all think on that a bit. We talked about it a bit on the show, but here's my take. In this generation and this year, if you got a good woman or a good man, you better keep them because that's real hard to come by. But I truly don't think Sierra is to blame for anything. The truth is, Russell Wilson is just not in his prime, and he's not where he used to be. It sounds obvious, but it's not so obvious. The Broncos are last in their division, winning only one game. He went from having a quarterback rating ranging in the 60s with the Seahawks to now a 39.8, putting him at the bottom tier of active quarterbacks. So he got rookie quarterbacks beating him. He can't roll out the pocket like he used to, and he keeps throwing picks. You also got to remember, Russell has a guaranteed contract. He got paid, and you know, things change when the money starts coming. So he's made the case that he cares most about his faith, family, and football. That's cute. We love to see it. But he just genuinely isn't where he was. There's a lot of things that have affected Russell. Some of these things that happen will probably never make him the same. When you compare an elite QB like Tom Brady, not everyone can play at such a high level for so many years, and especially at that caliber. And that's what makes Brady the GOAT. But as far as Russell, I don't think Sierra is one to blame. If anything, she definitely keeps him grounded, which is why he's always talking about his love for her. Because imagine if she was to leave him right now while he was playing not at his best and at his low. So... I'm not going to sit here and say Russell Wilson is the sole problem for the Broncos, but he's definitely not the solution. Now, ain't no way Jada Pinkett Smith, or should I say Jada Pinkett Shakur, is going on an interview tour and dissing Will Smith along the way. You know, J. Cole said, I want a real love, dark skin, um, viv love, that Jada and that Will love. And look, I think everybody was all for it until now. So I've seen a lot of men comment on this topic, but I haven't seen a lot of women give their opinion. So here's mine. I know we all seen Will slap Chris Rock at the Oscars for Jada. There's been a lot of rumors about what was said, but apparently after the incident, she told Will, I didn't come into this place as your wife, but I'm leaving here as your wife because we got a storm we're going to have to deal with together. I am not going to leave your side. Which, it sounds good on paper, but in, real, in reality, if I was Will, I don't know how I would take that, but to each their own. And this is when everyone found out that Jada and Will had actually been separated since 2016. She also said, if there is such a thing as past lives, I definitely think that Tupac and I have traveled a few together. But regarding her and Will's relationship, she felt like Tupac approved because Will was the first guy he never said anything about. But here's my thing. If Will is unbothered, why should we be? I mean, he knows what's going on because if he didn't, he wouldn't be at the book signing. At one of the events with Jada, he said, Jada is the best friend he has ever had on this planet and going to show up and support her for the rest of his life. That's what he will do. Like I said, which is cute to each their own. Now, me personally, I would not be putting up with a lot of the stuff they had going on, but maybe that's because I don't understand the bond that they have. And I also think Jada is talking a little too much, but if it sells her book, she gonna sell that book. 
And to be honest, I couldn't even see Will or Jada going to entertain someone else seriously. Now, you know, Jada has came out about stuff like that, but actually being in a commitment, I don't see it happening. And at the end of the day, we as people know entirely too much about the situation, but that's on them. They're sharing it, and that's why we're talking about it. So I know we've seen the jokes about it all, but at the end of the day, Jada is not okay. In an interview, she shared the voices were coming and telling her to commit suicide. So she plotted her death and wanted to make it look like an accident for the sake of her children. That's a lot to unpack. So take the information how you want it. But I hope they all get the help that's needed. Now, ain't no way G. Erbo broke Funny Marco's 30,000 watch during his interview. There's a lot of mixed reviews on this, but let, let me break it down, right? Funny Marco is a YouTuber known for interviewing different guests. So for this interview, he interviewed Chicago rapper G. Erbo and Southside. But they took control of his interview. You can watch the clip and come to the conclusion that you want. But they got on there on his interview, calling him goofy and told him to shut up. Then G. Erbo told him, I'm giving you more respect than you deserve. Again, me personally, I'm not taking that. I know we're told to be professional, but how far are you willing to sit there and let someone talk to you like that for a video? Because ain't no way you telling me to shut up on the interview I'm giving on you. But that's not even where it stops. They broke his $30,000 watch. And for their sake, Funny Marco deleted the clip, edited it out, but it was later revealed. People are going back and forth deciphering whether it was a skit. They don't think it was real. I personally don't think it was, considering Marco's comments after. He said, I understand a lot of y'all are mad about the interview. I was upset while it was going on, but I understand I got a job to do. And one thing about me, I respect people on my show. So my question to you all is, how long are you willing to put up with a situation like that for the sake of your job? Now, I probably would have stopped the interview because, like I said, he was not going to just sit there and disrespect me like that. I mean, Funny Marco definitely should have stood up. But if he felt like he did what was right, he felt like he did what was right. So I'm curious on your thoughts. So let me know in the comments down below what you would have done or what you think Funny Marco should have did. Pink horse power. She called this thing about toxic. What's happening, man? Baby, what's happening? Why are you walking like that? That's how, that's how I walk. And then, like, you come on breathing on me like that. I fucking breathe to live. And, like, you used to be dark skin, and now you act like hella light skin. Are you fucking blind? I'm dark skin. What, what the fuck? And then, like, look at your beard. What the fuck is your wrong with my looks beard? stupid. What the fuck are you talking about? No, I don't even like it. The way you breathe in, all of that. Has this ever happened to you? Your girl seems to be mad, angry, upset. She's frustrated. It's only one way to handle that. Pink horsepower. No, 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 oh, no. I'm just trying to give you a massage. Plus, have I told you how good your beard looks lately? It looks so good. No! PHP. It works every time. Wait! Where are you going? Welcome back, and this is where we enter Tell Me What's Up. Because like I said, the stats wouldn't be the stats without questions and opinions from you. So I asked for y'all's hot takes and y'all told me what's up. So one of the questions I asked is marriage overrated. And I also asked what's the difference between dating now versus then. And here's what y'all had to say. Somebody said men would romance you more back in the day. Now all you need is a blunt and some drink. Now, this is where I just feel like everybody's standards have gotten so low because if you get in a female or a man just by rolling up or bringing the drink, I mean, if that's what you want to take serious, cool. But if it's 
a little, you know, a little kickback, we cool. And that's a different type of situation, but to each their own. Um, difference in dating is relationships revolve around money, wannabe city girls. I truly think that everybody's kind of just tired of putting up with everybody. And I mean, we also talked about it on It Is What It Is. Make sure y'all go check out that episode. Uh, Hip hop has an influence on sports. I also do believe it has an influence on relationships because I ain't gonna lie. People bumping city girls, people bumping sexy red, people bumping ice spice. But the dudes, I mean, y'all can listen to whatever you want, but it's all toxic and we know it's all toxic, but it sounds good. So he be saying it. I mean, act up, you can get snatched up, like it goes on. But I think this is a problem on both parties. So next one, it says, it's more options now because of social media. It makes the dating look more chaotic, nobody loyal. So this is a conversation I had the other day with one of my friends, which is so funny because with social media and Instagram, you literally have access to millions of people on your phone. You can contact anybody you want through a DM. Like, I feel like back then, you know, if you had a, like your favorite person that you was trying to see, you would never be able to have access to them. Now, anybody can just pop up in your DM, pop up in your likes. And that's a, that's a lot of people like all in one place. So it's like, if people, if you're single, like you should want to be able to talk to other people, explore. But if you're not, I mean, you made that commitment. So it definitely is a lot. But if you ain't built to be in a commitment, then just don't be like, that's how I feel about it. But it definitely is hard because there's everybody everywhere and everybody can just slide into anybody's phone. Um, somebody else said, marriage ain't overrated. We just can't afford it anymore. Everybody be focused on their next bill defaulting. <laughs> I feel like if you're in a situation where you know, I guess you can't afford marriage, you can't afford what happens if you decide not to be in a marriage, the divorce papers, maybe don't be so quick to jump into it. I hate that it's became so transactional, but for some people it genuinely is. But if you're in that situation and you focus on your next bill, Maybe you don't need to be focusing on another girl. Maybe you need to be focusing on getting your money up <laughs> respectfully. Okay. Um, somebody said marriage is not for everyone with the percentage of divorces. It shouldn't be the normal. Um, I mean, I agree marriage is not for everyone, but I don't think it shouldn't be the normal. I think that if two people love each other and they want to be with each other unconditionally, it should be normal. Unless you feel like you're going to be unfaithful, then don't. <laughs> Um, next one is, um, main difference in dating is taking people on dates. It's not as common no more. I do feel like that's an issue with people who are younger because then again, I feel like if you don't be having money to get, take people on dates and dates don't even have to be expensive. Like you don't got to take nobody to a five-star dinner. Like you could think of something cute if you're interested in that person. It doesn't have to be expensive. Nobody's asking you to, to blow a band, but, um, I mean, dates are to get to know each other. I think people skip a lot of steps that are necessary to realize if you're even compatible with somebody else. But I mean, we're in a fast paced environment. So like everybody just want to get things done. So I think if you, you should take the time to date, um, it should be more common. And if it's not common, maybe you're not in the position to be dating. Um, somebody said the main difference dating now is social media. Your pops and your granddad could cheat in peace. Now, that's a good point. I'm not even going to lie because I feel like, like, again, to like I was saying before, people know too much. Um, we kind of can figure out everything really quickly. Um, and back then, like if somebody cheated, you didn't really have the facts to be like, oh, I knew you did this. So he could really just come up, bring you some flowers, call your mama on the house to speak to you if you live with your mama. And then that was that. But I don't know if it's a good thing that we know too much. Like, I feel like, it's good to know things up front, but at the same time, I don't know. It, it makes or breaks us. And then the last thing, this is not related to the questions that I asked, but somebody did ask me to talk about Caleb thinking he gonna get ownership in an old white league. So I do want to clarify that Caleb Williams thing is a rumor. He's never said that he wanted ownership in a team. I mean, nowadays with social media, um, people kind of take facts and run with it. That's why I try my best 
to get as much facts as I can and, you know, share the correct information. It's not always going to be correct. This is with everything. Because even with the Jada thing, like, I didn't even know, you know, she was dealing with other stuff. Not saying what is happening is okay, but we are so quick to kind of push out information that we don't even take the research to figure out what's really going on. But as far as I know, that was a rumor. And I don't even think that's legally possible for him to even have ownership in a league that he plays for. Like, you, you can't do that. But thanks for you guys' hot takes and questions. Um, that's a lot of food for thought. But y'all can hashtag check out the stat so we can continue the discussions next week. And maybe your question or take will be featured. Thanks for hanging out with me and checking out the stats. I'll see y'all next week. Uh, so big next. Like when they doing them two for five.